Shalom. Good evening, everyone. Um, or uh, good afternoon, if you're not, uh, if you're somewhere other than Israel. Um, welcome to uh, this uh, ninth of our, um, the ninth and final uh, of our uh, lectures in this series uh, of Mr. Prime Minister. Um, for any of you that are new to these events, uh, my name is Paul Gross. I'm a senior fellow here at the Menachem Begin Heritage Center. Uh, among other things, I have responsibility for most of the events and the programs that we do here in English. Um, and it's my pleasure to, to welcome you with us. Um, I should say that this is not our final Zoom event. Um, we plan to continue offering English programming uh, every week on a Wednesday, um, certainly until um, certainly for as long as this situation continues where we're not able to have physical events um, here at the center. Um, and uh, at the end of this event, I'll say a little bit more about what we have planned. Uh, it'll also be on our website and um, uh, I'll be sending out updates uh, to those of you on my mailing list. Um, and if you're not on the list and you'd like to be on my list, then you can email me at uh, uh, Paul, Paul G at begincenter.org.il, that's P-A-U-L-G, at B-E-G-I-N-C-E-N-T-E-R dot O-R-G dot I-L. Uh, okay, today we're gonna to be hearing about Ariel Sharon. Um, for many of us, uh, certainly people around my age, um, he is uh, most remembered as the Prime Minister uh, who led Israel with great success um, through the um, through the horrors of the Second Intifada, um, and then uh, of course implemented the uh, the Gaza disengagement, which was a a, a really a, a move which divided Israeli opinion. Um, for those for those who've been around a bit longer, um, you'll also remember Sharon as the Defense Minister during the first Lebanon War, ultimately controversial Defense Minister, and further back as one of the great um, one of the really great Israeli war heroes and, and generals. Um, and however you remember him, uh, he was, I think, a, a larger than life figure who played a major part in so many um, key historical moments in Israel's history. And he was prime minister during perhaps, uh, arguably, the most difficult period since the War of Independence, so during, certainly during the longest war in Israel's history. Uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd argue that the Second Intifada was, uh, was a war. Um, now, to tell us about uh, Ariel Sharon, we're very fortunate to have with us uh, the author of an, an acclaimed biography of, of Ariel Sharon, uh, Ambassador Freddy Eitan. Uh, in addition to his book on Sharon, uh, he's also written biographies of Shimon Peres and Benjamin Netanyahu, and 25 other books on the Arab-Israeli conflict. In addition, he has a distinguished career as a journalist in academia, uh, and as a diplomat, uh, hence the title ambassador. Um, his diplomatic career culminated in him being appointed in 1998 as Israel's first ambassador to Mauritania, uh, with a remit to represent Israel in uh, North Africa more broadly. And today he is a senior researcher at the uh, JCPA think tank, the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Um, so I'm gonna pass over to uh, Ambassador Eitan, and uh, you can, as uh, some of you will know from the previous lectures, you can ask, write questions in the chat box. We'll have time, I think, for two or three questions at the end, and I'll, I'll choose the, the most uh, appropriate ones to, to put to our speaker at the end. Okay, um, the, I'm gonna do a screen share so we have a PowerPoint for this, and I'm gonna hand the floor over to Ambassador Eitan. Thank you. Well, th thank you, Paul. Uh, good evening. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, a pleasure and uh, a privilege to talk about uh, Ariel Sharon. I first met Ariel Sharon in uh, 1965. It means 55 years ago, uh, two years uh, before the Six Days War when I was a young soldier in the IDF ranks. At that time, uh, he, Sharon was uh, already a colonel in the paratroopers. And the super 
is that with iron discipline, the training of the troops. And uh, he came over and asked me a few questions about the terms of service. Uh, I reply uh, briefly. And uh, before leaving, uh, Sharon said to me, soldier, always know how to protect yourself and defend yourself. And the trench you just dug is not deep enough. Take care for the next time because the enemy is covered and ruthless. His uh, direct words to the soldiers were always uh, spoken with sincere interest. His words are spoken with uh, a smile, but we could neither disobey, no blame, no argue. It was typically Sharon's style that we accompanied the long and rich career. Well, Ariel Sharon, born in Eretz Israel in Palestine in February 1928. Ariel is the son of Shmuel and Vera Scheinman. He had a troubled childhood tormented by the events of the time. Uh, in uh, Kfar Malal, it's uh, near Kfar Saba today, his family lives uh, in a tent without electricity or running water. He observes with admiration his father and how he, the farm is going. He imagines a, a Western hero like uh, Gary Cooper, <laughs> and he sees himself riding a horse and galloping in the middles. He dreams of one day running his parents' farm and becoming a famous farmer. But Sharon is lonely, he stays away from the children of the village. And he, he, he was more fun with animals. And he had a dog, a faithful dog, a Spitz. And every evening he goes up and watches what he calls a, a merry-go-round between the cat and the mouse. And, uh, and before falling uh, asleep, he listens in admiration popular Russian songs and travel of the violin, which his father plays admirably. That is the point, that the culture of the land harmonizes with art and music. And the Father Shmuel, an agronomist of, by profession, symbolizes the Jewish pioneers of Russia, firmly rooted in the heart with an iron will, but contrary to the collective spirit of the kibbutz, he devoted a real cult to the labor of the soil. Ariel carries with uh, her character traits. He uh, also thinks he is always right, but that is a big mistake. In 1945, I was uh, 70 years old. The Second World uh, War was just end ended. All uh, young people of uh, this age are uh, mobilized against the advice of his father. He decided to join the Palmach. It means the socialist Haganah. And he puts on the uniform with right. And uh, he leaves its marks. And the young Eric took a part in several operations against Arab armed bands. He fights also at Latoun. This is the hill which everyone know, which controls the road to Jerusalem. But there, seriously injured, he sees death for the first time in front. He will learn to suffer in silence and never, never give up, never despair. And after the war of independence, Ari Sharon was already a captain 
in the military intelligence service. He battles all along the dividing line with the West Bank. And um, he also attacks against uh, Israeli targets. And Ari Sharon, because became a, what I said, the undisputed leader of one unique unit, the unit 101. And uh, the, it, it must say that the behavior of this uh, unit is often white. The rates of the unit 101 are spectacular. And the number of terrorist attacks has dropped considerably. It's very interesting because Prime Minister Ben Gurion appreciates Arik character and these uh, methods of fighting terrorism. His first meeting with him will be decisive from the young officer career. From now, Captain Sharon takes part in staff meetings protected by Ben Gurion. And Sharon persists in signs and often mocks the orders received by the superiors. Proud, also supported by exaggerated assurance, self confidence, it causes a lot of turmoil in the staff of the army. Because the, the young officer, who is only 22 only, is soon to be the focus of the journalists and the press, is full of flattering articles about which he, he described his exploits, his adventures. And uh, however, the Moshe Dayan, the, the chief of staff, is also wants to bear his way. And Dayan mobilizes uh, Sharon in uh, what he called the, the first campaign with France and Britain in the Sinai Desert, what he called Milhamet Kadesh. And uh, Sharon was uh, the first with his uh, companions, with his regiment, he arrived triumphantly on the banks for the first time of the Suez Canal. It was in October 19. 46, 56. Well, after this victory, Sharon went to study and go to London. He moved to London with his wife, Margaret, and, uh, and their child, Guri. And he, he studied at the prestigious English military school in Berkeley. After a year, he returned to Israel but very disappointed about because Dayan is not longer the chief of staff. And Burion had retired to his kibbutz, Zdeboker of the Negev. But one day, while he is having fun with his young son, a terrible news falls. His wife, Margalit is killed in a car accident on the road to Jerusalem. Margalit's younger sister, Lily, takes care of the child and acts as his mother. And a few months later, Lily married to Eric. We are in 1963, chief of staff is Yitzhak Rabin, appointed Ariel Sharon as deputy head of the Northern Command. But uh, even in this post, Eric does not last long. The new uh, center chief, General uh, Elazar, when well, uh, Dado, and it was a tension between them and the uh, tension is increased day by day with the Syrians who decide to divert the waters of the Jordan. But Sharon, as Sharon said, adopts the hard line. I personally, it, 
eyewitness says Stormy sins between the two men. Sharon thinks that Dado does not trust him and don't intrigues against him. He is uh, his own guy. Having uh, worked closely with uh, General Elazar for uh, two years, more than two years, I can say that uh, Dado is a man of integrity. He cannot accept an adventure in a region overpopulated with agriculture villages, and he decided to curb Charon's fairy ambitions, and he rightly thinks that the best part of courage is also to be moderate and with wise creativity. And Charon finds himself overnight without, for the first time, military activity. It takes a leave without pay and takes the opportunity to, to make a trip to Africa. On his return, Robin appoints him chief of instruction at the, of, uh, at the general staff, but he, he was frustrated and uh, he moved to the Tsala district near Tel Aviv here, near Ramat Aviv. But the situation along the borders is getting, is getting worse. And on June 5, 1967, war broke and lasted only six days. And the scenario of, of 1956, Sinai campaign is repeated. Eric is again the first on the backs of the Suez Canal. But uh, as you know, after he, uh, his first step is uh, in uh, as begin in uh, to decide is uh, the schools and the school military schools to the West Bank, despite strong uh, opposition, uh, Sharon, uh, his plan his plan is very clear. He wants to combine what he calls settlements, military settlements, with a massive Jewish presence in biblical territory. His first step is settle military in this ter territory to create settlements and guarantee their security. And through this policy, Sharon accomplished facts, fait accompli, and created pledges for the future. And uh, when uh, in October 4, 1967, after the war, the Jewish state celebrated the Hebrew New, New Year, Rosh Hashanah. But that morning, Sharon is at home with his uh, children when he suddenly hears a shot from the garden. He runs outside and sees an horrible scene. His eldest son, Guri, lies on the grass in blood with all the rifle at his side. Arik takes his son in his arms and transports him to the hospital. It was too late. The child is already dead. He is only 10 years old. He is buried near his mother, Margalit, who died five years later, earlier. Well, Ari Sharon has uh, experienced several tragedies in his life, but it was the most painful. El son Guri killed by a comrade with his own gun. It's stifling, it's in his eyes unforgivable. Well, uh, after this drama, in solitude, 
views, in reflections. Sharon is already 41 years old, but he thinks of his next future in civilian life. And uh, in January 1972, General David Lazar is the new IDF chief of staff. Sharon, who wanted to become head of the army, is deeply disappointed and find himself forced to leave the army. He is 45, and the retirement age at that time for the military. He abandoned the law, the, he bought his, uh, his villa in, uh, in Tsala, and he obtained a loan to France, convinced them uh, he could repay it, deeply attached on the ground, and uh, he, he returned and he, he came to his ranch in the Negev. But months, few months ago, again, attention at the borders. On October 5, 1973, the Yom Kippur War broke out. The Balev line on the Suez Canal turns into a calendar of fortifications fall like carved houses. Sharon ties the impossible without informing his superiors. He go, he went on the offense and tries to cross himself the Suez Canal. After a few failed attempts, he, he succeeded. And standing, triumphing before the doors of Ismailia, not far, 100 kilometers from Cairo. And there, we stop it. And the departure of General Elazar after the resignation of Golda Meir and Diane and, and leaves him hope. And the new Prime Minister, Yitzhak Rabin, appoints him to a special advisor on security affairs and to fight against terrorism. And after a few months also, the Rabin government fell after a central mansion voted by Knesset. And uh, you know that uh, Sharon is, was become a hero of Israel. And very sure of himself, he decided to go it alone and to create his own party, Shlom Tzion. But he will be bitterly disappointed because uh, the people only gave him two seats alone. And uh, without enthusiasm, he rallied the new coalition with Menachem Begin and became in his government Minister of Agriculture. Well, encouraged by uh, also with Begin and uh, uh, the block of fates, and thousands of settlers settled in more comfortable living conditions. And uh, meanwhile, Begin forced the hill, and uh, two of his ministers, Diane and Weizmann, slammed the door in his face for neglecting the solution of the Palestinian problem. And the Ministry of Defense is vacant and Begin is forced to offer it to Sharon. Even if he thinks that uh, the general 
Portugal will one day be able to surround the presidency of the council in his tanks. Well, Sharon, who was refused leadership of the IDF, is now the new boss of the Israeli army and all of the Jewish state's defense forces. It was a nice revenge. And now, supported by the new general, Rafael Eitan, known as Raful, Sharon established a fruitful contacts with Christian leaders in Lebanon. And uh, he arrives late at night and meets uh, Bashir Jamal, military chief of the Falangians. And uh, on February 1982, Begin met Bashir Jamal, and a few months after, on June 4, 1982, Shlomo Argov, our friend, the Israeli ambassador in London, was seriously injured by a terrorist attack. 48 hours later, Israel troops entered Lebanese territory. And the Lebanese operation limited at uh, four, four kilometers, quickly transformed into a total war against the PLO and also against Syria, and uh, lasted more than three months. And in September 14, Bashir Jemayel was killed in an attack in Beirut and uh, Sharon cards are scrambled. He considered all the scenarios, but not the death of Jemayo. And uh, after that, the Falages massacre savagely, without distinction, the men, women, and children in the Palestinian camps of Saba and Shatila suddenly become infamous. And uh, all the international opinion is turned upside down, and Israel, Sharon, is put in the spot and is called gathering in Tel Aviv as a murder for the first time. And the conclusion of a uh, investigation, after the conclusion, Sharon is forced to resign. And uh, in September, two years after, following the results of uh, the legislative uh, elections, Shabir and Paris from a government of national unity, a cohabitation between the two major political blocs, Likud and Labour. And Sharon is a member of this government and will be the Minister of Industry and Trade for more than six years. Well, six years after, Saddam Hussein invited Kuwait and Israel is threatened by SCAD missiles. Sharon offers his good offices and suggest a preventive air attack and operation in Iraq. But Prime Minister Shamir refused. He prefers to keep a low profile and leave the Americans alone in Iraq. And it was a good decision because after that, in October 1991, a peace conference opens in Madrid, direct negotiation between Israel and the Arab states, and the Shamir government fell, of course, after that, and gave victory to the Labour Party. But a new peace process has start, that of Oslo. And they change all the 
<clears throat> the strategy and also the paradigm of uh, all the Middle East, because Arafat arrives from Tunis and takes control of the Palestinian territory. And uh, we know what is following, and in November 10, 1995, Rabin was assassinated in the public square by a far-right Jewish fanatic. Well, in the, after that, as you know, uh, the, the elections, Benjamin Netanyahu became the new prime minister, and Sharon uh, became the Minister of National Infrastructure. In my role as uh, advisor in the office of the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, then uh, as uh, Israel's ambassador, I had uh, the privilege of knowing Sharon better the diplomat. He was respected by Arab leaders. And uh, after, you know, Netanyahu's mandate, it came to an end, and uh, his government was replaced by uh, that, uh, by Ehud uh, Barak. Sharon was become a leader of the opposition, but uh, also, however, two dramas shake up the family. And uh, on December 1999, fire ravaged the Sycamore farm. His own house is in ashes due to a, a short electricity circuit. And the fire ravaged rustic furniture, carpets, painting, books, albums, photos. And you know, only a Bible was spared. But a new tragedy. Three months later, Sharon, wife, Lily, 63 years old, dies in hospital bed after suffering from a cancer. And Sharon feels terribly lonely. Because Lily, she was always by his side. And his disappearance plunged him into melancholy and reflection. And on September 2000, he and his activities entered as a chief of uh, the opposition, he entered the esplanade of the Temple Mount. The visit angered Muslims around the world, revived the Palestinian Intifada, and precipitated the fall of Ehud Barak. And the new Sharon speaks little and smites a lot. And in this campaign, he represents the grandfather, the man rich in experience, who can reassure his people. And on February 2001, he was election in over 16, 62% of the voters voted for him. And uh, he became the, the new prime minister. But the day after his victory, Sean will first go to the grave of his wife, Lily. Then uh, he went to Jerusalem to hear a prayer for peace before the, the cotton. As Sean, I said that 
it's exchange. He, he has, because the date of uh, his wife, and uh, you may say that also at that time, the police investigations of his sons have really shaken him. He tries to, to hide his feelings and not lose face. And his tone and style, he was more calmer, less arrogant, but always determined, always a pioneer. And first, he gives to the Israeli a sense of security because he fights against terrorism, against the Intifada, Palestinian Intifada. He eliminates many terrorists and put Yasser Arafat in quarantine. And also, he, as a strategist and warden in a political manipulation, he can also, he is able to hide the game for a long time. Because after he decided to, to evacuate the disengagement plan, the evacuate of the, the Gaza Strip, he, 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 he went uh, all the way by creating a new party, Kadima. And uh, it was also it, it was uh, in, in this, this, this engagement, it was also made many, many, many mistakes. And uh, we can say that also about the leadership, because uh, he, he is a very, he made thousands of decisions. But also, you can say it, that uh, in many moments, you, you, you must see all the picture, the white picture. And uh, is this disengagement, it was also a great mistake. Because, as you know, we have, we continue with the Hamas in power with rockets from the street and thousands also of rockets and no no peace treaty not with the hamas and not with the father well i say that sharon said again and again that terror and violence against jews in israel but also in diaspora, we'd be stopped and eradicated. And terrorists must be stopped before they act. This is his strategy, his policy since the 16, when he was a young commander in the 101 regiment. Sharon also said, the Palestinian government, the authority, is a terrorist government. The Palestinian leaders have to make a choice. You cannot have one foot in terror and one foot in politics. You must deal with them as against an enemy. No mercy, never with fear of pity. I remember the, the way in which Arik Sharon conducted himself to the second Intifada and how determined he was to defend the Israeli people and what he judged essential for the future security for the people of Israel and not in order to satisfy opinion polls. And Sharon was respected as a man of his word. A man, I said, in English we say, a real man. We could be counted upon 
Sharon to keep his agreement. Sharon never had to prove he was the final, famous general Arab. He must trust him, and the Arabs need to fear him. Because he believes sincerely that the Jewish people must live only in Israel and build together a strong and peaceful state. This vision which he received from his parents, from Shmuel and Vera, and it's the, the, the pioneers from Russia. And Sharon belongs to the leaders who wrote the early history of Israel. The most enduring legacy of Eric Sharon is that he considered the security of Israel as having a higher priority than making peace with the Arabs. And you can say that, of course, Sharon is a charismatic leader. And uh, I heard, uh, you know, about leadership. And leadership uh, takes place every day, you can say, in our world, in our politics and the business. And, uh, you know, a leader has to engage people in facing the challenge, their values, changing uh, perspectives and developing new habits of behavior. And in times of turmoil, of distress, we turn to authority. And, uh, you know, it's the same today. We are now in times of turmoil, of distress, but we place our hopes and frustration upon those who presume knowledge, wisdom, and skill. And to fight our independence, at that time, Ben Gurion was the right man in the right place. And in the Six Day War, Moshe Dayan also. But to evacuate Sinai and the village of Yamit in 1981, after the peace treaty with Egypt, with Anwar al Sadat, Ariel Sharon was the man. Because we look to our authorities for direction, protection, and order for answers they cannot provide. But let me say that there is a difference between a politician and a statesman. A politician acts regarding his own interests and his future career. But a statesman is a leader which the interests of the nation and the future of the state is more important. And according to, to Sharon, they say that there are important factors of leadership regarding to Ariel Sharon. First of all, courage based upon knowledge of self. Because no follower wishes to be dominated by a leader who lacks self-confidence and courage. Sharon was a tremendous example. He was in the 16, the chief of the special commander unit. In the Six Day War, as a commander of an armory division, in the Yom Kippur, Sharon represented the ultimate leadership. By his courage, he caused the canal, the Suez Canal. And he, he became the hero of the war. And the second, second, uh, second point is self-control. The man who cannot self himself, so he can never control 
others. And, uh, you know, I taste the, frankly, a problem of leadership because Sharon was in the past a man who burned red lights and he did uh, some mistakes in, in the first uh, Lebanon war in uh, 1982. But not as a leader, but in his hasty way to attend the goal, to arrive in the capital the first time that he, in the army, the Sahal, arrived to, a, to our Arab capital. It is the first time. We refuse to arrive to Cairo, but he, he wants to arrive to Beirut to arrive with IDF forces to Beirut and to change the regime. He can't change the regime. It was a, a wishful sticking and he paid a heavy price. The third point I think is also a sense of justice and respect is following. Sharon, was a man of integrity and he respects his followers and friends for better and for worse. It was the ability to cooperate with others. Nevertheless, he, he was proud and a pretension man. So, uh, choosing to directly confront with uh, mediocre uh, adversaries. But he preferred to let them criticize him. And for the fourth, I think, for the fourth factor is also a very important the credibility and the, how you, what you decide, what is the decision, the time of decision, the capacity. And to take great risk because decision to accomplish a plan requires courage and power of will persistence in essential factor to be a leader and uh, for example in the west bank and gaza street it combines military strategy in a massive jewish presence in Eretz israel his plan was to create a series of facts that are complete on the ground to ensure the future. And uh, they also, the, I think that the, the example of uh, this engagement from uh, Gaza Strip in uh, 2005 is a, is a good example how a leader prepared the opinion and assume his credibility. He realizes his plan without one shot of fire, one shot of fire. Because Sharon had the issues precise order that the evacuation be carried out peacefully. The plan was scrupulously followed down to the last detail. And personally, Sharon supervises the implementation of this disengagement because he had a lot of experience. He had already evacuated the residents of the towns of northern part of uh, the Sinai in April 1982. But also the, the disengagement in the uh, diplomatic area, it was a real benefit to Israel. And uh, Sharon's personal reputation took a sharp turn for the better. His prestige and credibility as a leader grew up. Well, the f I think that the, the fifth factor is an ability to make reasonable judgment to have a practical wisdom to take a pragmatic decision, to have also a sense of proportion and humor. And uh, sometimes 
Sharon is like for jobs and funny situation. You know, the majority of the leaders of Israel came from the army. Is uh, natural. Since uh, 1948, we are in war. And uh, but an officer of IDF is always on the ground in the battlefield and clashes is equal among uh, all the soldiers but is first in the floor always but in politics a new leader needs a clean record good knowledge in uh, politics field because he must take a, a strong conviction and great influence, a realization of an idea, a project. But this is the secret of Ariel Sharon, because he has to succeed to combine military leadership with the experience, very rich experience in politics. It was not easy at all to, to surmount many obstacles and difficulties. I remind you that Yitzhak Abin had felt in managing his first government in uh, 1975, after the Yom Kippur War. Ehud Barak who was a brilliant chief of staff and most decorated soldier felt just after the second intifada as today he is uh, an outsider and not uh, yet popular i add that to succeed in war you need a decisive victory but in politics or diplomacy it depends also of your partner to negotiate and to make a good deal we need a leadership in the, the other side. But regarding today uh, with the Palestinians for absence of potential partners, we can say that we fell. But there are also regarding to, to Sharot, not only he not only succeeds, but they are many also failures first in uh, military failures you know civilians were killed in his operations against terrorists what he called at that time fedayins but the enfant terrible of the idf is confrontation with the superiors in the headquarters he saw everything through the lens of the battlefield because that he lost the direction of the IDF. He felt he, in the first Lebanese war. But in politics, failure, he felt in the first election, his uh, independent party obtained two seats only in the Knesset. Yes, of course. Moshe Dayan, General Moshe Dayan, and General Ezer Weissman, same results. And Sharon was fired from the Ministry of Defense after a Khan Commission deliberation. And uh, about personal failure, we can say bad management of the family's corruption scandal, his charisma, leadership, and experience both in battlefields and diplomatic arena would have given Israel better decision. You know, we are living in the Middle East and uh, debates regarding the conflict are full of patience because we are debating exist existential questions in arena and in uh, oriental mentality and behavior. But Sharon has succeeds as the brilliant officers and these 
social admiring. As the chief of government, he has succeeded to give us security as the one grandfather. His leadership in politics was very different from Barack, Netanyahu, and also Olmert, because he was older and became prime minister when he was 70 years old. And after a long, long and rich experience, and uh, Sharon, he had listened good advices, and he has coordinated with different ministries, such as the defense and foreign affairs. He, of course, uh, would decide alone in all countries. But Sharon had a global scene of the situation. And as a, a former general, he adopted the army rules in politics, good intelligence, preparation of the documents. He had a, a good staff in professional politics field. He has asked always the good question. And also his probably character, he, he, he would accept a different way of thinking. This is the real politics. And last but not the least, Sharon had all what we call a sixth sense. Intelligence may and will communicate voluntarily without any effort. This is, I think, the legendary Ariel Sharon. Thank you very much, Ambassador Eitan. Um, we're going to stop this uh, um, PowerPoint, just a second. OK. Um, OK, I'm going to ask you, Ambassador, a couple of questions that came up. Um, there were a couple of questions regarding the first Lebanon war. Um, and with two questions asking basically the same thing um, about did Sharon um, overstep his authority and not consult with Begin or not, or mislead Begin in some way, in your estimation? Yes, I think that uh, Sharon made the mistake because of the first, the plan is to go to enter to, to stop the Katyusha rockets, you know, from to, to Kekayachmona, to Metula. And uh, it's the, the begging say that uh, it must be a, what he calls Shloma Galil. It means that you must withdraw the, the PLO, the positions of the PLO, not the Hezbollah today, but PLO to 40 kilometers to the Litani, to, to the Litani River. That's all. But he said that to, to Begin. And begin stressing, of course. But Sharon and Raful, not only Sharon, wants to go and to change regime because he said that the phalanges, it means the Christians with Jemayel, can change the regime and to be, and to, you know, that we signed at that time a peace treaty with Lebanon after that, you know? The, the peace treaty only. 18, 18 days <laughs> and uh, the sabotage and uh, they killed after the Jemayel, when he killed, they changed all the situation in Lebanon. And we draw with, from Lebanon from 1982 to May 2000 by the decision of Ehud Barak. In, in 2000, 2000. Yeah. And I think that we must, if you are a Minister of Defense, you must say to your Prime Minister, Prime Minister, I accept all the plan. I, I agree with you, but trust me. And you must go with all the details 
asks and give him all details about the plan. Okay, um, can you, we had another question, I guess because this, because we're the Begin Center, um, there was some, we have, uh, you know, um, among the audience, people who, who are big uh, fans and supporters and admirers of Menachem Begin, um, can you say anything more about the, the nature of the relationship between Sharon and Begin? You know, they begin respect generals, respect military, respect soldiers, respect discipline. He was a, Begin was a gentleman. <laughs> he, he, he was a, a, gent, a, a Polish gentleman. <laughs> he, he, he was also a chief, a chief of the Betar, a chief of the Etzel, and Begin respect discipline and respect mutually respected but he wants also to be fair fair play to say to everyone that you must with credibility you must the decision is is he is very responsible about the decision of the government of course yeah. but after after the invasion of uh, by the IDF in Beirut after the massacre and in uh, in Shabba and Shatila, but also after, as you know, they are gathering near Balfour, when the residence of Menachem Begin now is uh, the residence of Netanyahu, and uh, you know, yesterday you saw. <laughs> You saw demonstrations there, <laughs> and uh, you in begging, begging every day, every day, so the demonstrations against the war in Lebanon. And uh, as you know, many soldiers were killed in Lebanon every day, and for him is it was terrible. And because that. He, he, after the Kahan uh, Commission, he said that it, is, it was the good decision. And the relation between them is respect, but suspicion. He, he, he don't say that he was very, very, very trust Ariel Sharon. He know that he, he can be, he can be with rules and he can, he can lies, maybe. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm one, one last question for you. Um, there was a famous statement made by Sharon uh, that he said, um, um, uh, what you see from here, you don't see from there, right? What you, see, what you see when you're prime minister, you see the big picture, which is what you talked about, which you don't necessarily see when you're not in that, in that ultimate position of responsibility. Um, yes. Is that, do you... Do you attribute that to his decision to go for the disengagement from Gaza? Or is, I mean, we, I had one question uh, where someone raised the, 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 the accusation that he was doing it to, to stop, people, stop the left criticizing him. Um, how do you feel about that? I think that both. Because, you know, he, he, I think Sharon C, as you say, the big, uh, picture the wider and uh, the complex view, and he he, uh, he 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 have a dream, you know, he have a dream to control from Pakistan to <laughs> to, to 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 Egypt. He is is a general as Napoleon said. So you know, they are there are dreams, you know, all the generals and the the conquerors who conquered many territories. But you must be a pragmatic, and I think that uh, uh, Sharon, uh, he, he have the, the problem of corruption and the trial against Omri, his son. And, uh, but it is not, I don't think that he is not only the reason that he decide the disengagement. The disengagement also, because he said he, He's, he's not a naive, you know. Sharon said that is more, more security to Israel. We wrote the settlements, many settlements, to give them 
and to reallocate it in, in, in new territory. And also we wrote the IDF because it costs many, many problems. Many, we pay a lot of money, but it also we pay many terrorist attacks. But the mistake is that he, he refused to make a deal with the Palestinians. It is unitary decision and not a deal with a partner, with a partner. And because that uh, Hamas one year after uh, take office and take the power and they, they, they continue to be an enemy today, it was wrong the situation, it's wrong more than it was before the disengagement. Okay. Um... Well, I'm going to thank you very much for your time, uh, for enlightening us and educating us um, about this uh, remarkable leader um, of Israel. Um, thank you very much, Ambassador Eitan. Um, I'm, I'm applauding and you can hear me, but everyone else is on mute, but assume you can hear them as well. Um, to everyone else, uh, thank you for joining us again. Um, I will, there'll be information on the website uh, I, pick, I got some of the emails that you sent me on the chat. I've noted them down. Everyone else can email me, paulg at begincenter.org.il. If you want to be on the mailing list and you're not on my mailing list, many of you, I think, are on my mailing list and will get updates anyway uh, about what's happening next. I can tell you next week uh, we're going to have uh, something um, uh, connected to the Jewish calendar. It's during the three weeks and the week before Tisha B'Av, and we're going to have a talk about that. Uh, the week after that is Arab Tisha B'Av, so we will not have a lecture. Um, and then starting in August, we're going to have a new series of four lectures on the uh, looking at the contemporary Middle East. Um, but I will give any more information about that, as I said, on email, and it's going to be on the website. Thank you, everyone, again. Good evening. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all.